Hack New Music Friday and welcome to the Hack Music Theory Show. So today, Tom Morello dropped his new single, Rabbit Revenge, which I'm super stoked about as I've been a massive Tom Morello fan ever since I first heard Rage Against the Machine back in 1992. <laughs> and also, I've actually had the monumental honor of working with Tom on a song of mine, which if you haven't heard, you really should. I'll pop a link below, check it out. Alright, back to Tom's new single. It's a really cool crossover of electronic, hip-hop and rock as it's a collaboration with producer Bass Nectar and rappers Big Boy and Killer Mike. Now the song sounds both slow and fast at the same time and Tom's riff sounds super gangster. So how do they do that? The answer's coming up. But first, two. Revolutionaries, I'm Kate Harmony, this is Ray Harmony, and together we are Revolution Harmony. All right, it's time to open your doll to hack music theory. The drums. There are two main characteristics that give Rabbit's Revenge its unique flavor. The first is that the song feels simultaneously slow and fast. How did they pull off this sorcery? Well, the song's tempo is 88 BPM. Which is relatively slow. And Bass Nectar has a huge hip-hop beat going, with a backbeat snare. However, Tom is playing a 16th note riff on his guitar over the top, which sounds relatively fast. And what connects these two elements is the 16th note pattern on the hi-hats. This hack results in the song feeling slow and fast at the same time, and it's used to connect slow drums with fast melodies in many genres, from new school hip hop to old school death metal. Right, so to make this kind of beat, you want to start by setting your grid to 16th notes, then you want to throw in closed hats on all the 16th notes, then next you want to slap a snare on beat 2 and beat 4, and then finally you want to kick beat 1, beat 2 and, and beat 3 and, and it sounds like this. The guitar. The second distinctive characteristic in Rabbit's Revenge is Tom's guitar riff. Man sound gangsta! <laughs> <laughs> How does Tom create this super edgy sound? Well, he's using two non-diatonic notes, which are notes that are not in the scale, and therefore sound rather dissonant. This song is in the key of D minor, which contains the notes D, E, F, G, A, B flat, C. But in the main riff, Tom also plays an E flat, which is the flat two, and a C sharp, which is the seven. These anti-scale notes give the song its anti-establishment feel. And by the way, if you need help understanding scales or even brushing up on them, no problem, we got you covered. Just read our free book, 12 Music Theory Hacks to Learn Scales and Chords, which you can download at hackmusictheory.com. All right, so what you see on the screen right now is the guitar riff that we made using the music theory from Rabbit's Revenge. The first thing you'll notice is the two layers in this riff. Tom's in drop D tuning, so this main riff is centered around a ping-ponging between that low D and the D an octave higher. So start writing your riff by simply coming up with an interesting rhythm between the low D and the high D. Then move some of your high Ds up to E flat and E, and then move some down to C sharp and C. Then lastly, we moved a few of our low Ds up a semitone to E flat for extra gangsta dissonance. <laughs> And we're done. And just before the playthrough, remember we intentionally wrote our example to be very similar to the original song, but we did that for the sake of this lesson. So instead of copying Tom, please explore how you can use these hacks creatively with your own musical personality so it sounds like you. Also, quick question, do you struggle to finish your music? If you answered yes, then we can help you. Yes, indeed we can! Just check out our cutting edge online apprenticeship course, where you'll learn how to make new sections for existing sections, how to transition between sections even when they're in different keys, and most importantly, how to finish your songs. If that sounds useful to you, then head on over to hackmusictheory.com. All right, that's it. We really hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, please subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications. Also, we believe in sharing our knowledge for free. Mm -hmm. 
Please pay it forward by teaching these hacks to a friend so they can benefit from this lesson as well. Yeah, and I've been teaching music theory for 24 years, so I can safely say that the best way to learn something is to teach it to someone else. So go forth and teach. <laughs> and on that note, thanks for joining the Hack Music Theory Revolution, and we'll see you next New Music Friday.